We're going to start off with some flour, plain flour, at 360 grams. And then we've got some baking powder, about 15 grams of that. And then some salt, about 20 grams of salt. So obviously the flour, we know what we're going to use. The flour, the baking powder, obviously, is going to create a little bit more gas, which will make the batter lighter, and then obviously seasoning. Now here, at the restaurant, we use um, some fairly advanced type of starches, which aren't that easy to get hold of. So mix all these in. Right, so that's the dry part, ready. And now I need to add my liquid. So what I'm going to do is add 375 grams of beer. And then the same, but 375 grams of sparkling water. Okay, then give them all that. Give a little mix. Again, one of the key things to this recipe is getting enough CO2 in there, getting enough stuff that's going to create gas, which will then expand the, the batter, so you'll get a much sort of lighter, more bubbly texture. And it's important to work quite quickly at this point, because you want to sort of keep as much of the as much of the fizz in the batter as possible. Can you feel the tension? <laughs> so now, uh, once that's gassed up, bowl of flour, plain flour, and another bowl for the batter. I'm going to use Bass Groper. Just very classical technique. Just dip it in flour first, and then for the for the batter, so now what you've got here, you have a very, very light aerated batter. Fish into the oil. What I want to do with this is just spread some more, and then when you be careful in the oil, just pulse it, pulse it, pulse it, pulse it, pulse it. If you dip it straight in, it'll shoot the fresh batter off. And you can just build up these beautiful layers of batter. Once it's once it's hard enough to support, support itself. Flip the fish over, which I'll do now. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Good batter to fish ratio. Just layering the batter on. So while that's finishing off, we're going to serve this with a recipe of mine that you guys probably never have heard of: triple cooked chips. <laughs> <laughs> And you know the main thing is you cut your potatoes, rinse the starch off, cook them in, in water, cook them for long enough until they start to break up. See these little bits like this? That's really important because fat only goes into a potato where there's a crack. It won't go in otherwise. And chips without fat, we well, might as well eat something else. Oh. There, so if you, you can see now all those bubbles that have come up on that batter, and the fish is nicely protected. That's, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a steak. <laughs> that is a steak. And I'm just going to leave that rest, because now there's enough steam built up on the inside. The thinner part will be done, the thicker part, another minute or two minutes. So just leave that, and that should just finish off, finish off cooking. And then, so we're back to the chips. You've done this, you've created those cracks, lift it out of the water, very delicate, you chill them down, then you cook them in oil. Then the first fry, 130 degrees, and you just then gelatinize this starch that's collected on the outside, firms up the chip, and then the final cooking, 180. OK, so that's the fish ready. So to finish this off, I've got some of the triple cook chunky chips. In here, uh, it's mushy peas. Uh, so this is a flash frozen peas. All they've done is warmed up, crushed them with butter, salt, pepper, and mint. And that's it. And 
then, it's the SAS of the fish and chip fish. And then I'm serving that with, which for me is the smell of a fish and chip shop from my childhood. It's just the juice from pickled onions. Okay, Laura, Ben. <laughs> okay, so let's let's serve uh, let's just cut into this fish and see. Oh yeah. So crunchy. Not bad, is it? <laughs> right, and then welcome to my chippy. Superb. All right, so there's my my perfect fish and chips. It takes me back to my childhood and my love of the chippy. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to show you one of my favourite drinks. I love skiing. And one of the best things you can have in a cold up a cold mountain is a hot chocolate. But this hot chocolate is a Black Forest Gatto hot chocolate. <laughs> A few years ago, I did a whole uh, show on Black Forest Gatto. Went to Germany, Baden, Baden. Oh, hello. First I heard Black you, Forest yeah. Gatto, so I thought, <laughs> Black and Forest I can smell Gatto. chocolate, so I'm coming in. <laughs> Carry on, good man. Two most important things, Black Forest Gatto. It's chocolate, it's cherries, it's kirsch, it's cream. So what we're going to do, first off, in here, I made a ganache. I've used two different types of chocolate. One's got uh, slightly citrusy notes, the other chocolate has got red fruit notes to it. Slightly plummy. And with the ganache, melt the chocolate, bring the milk up to a simmer, pour the milk onto the chocolate, and you end up with this ganache that is so, so creamy. We've also added some orange zest, some lime zest, a bit of grapefruit zest. We've added a little bit of coffee for the bitter notes. And then we've added some cherry sauce. So we've done that, we've infused that mixture, and that is basically our hot chocolate base. And on top of that, we're going to have a cream. So the cream actually gas, can I? Yeah. So you've got white, you've got a better specific white chocolate here? Yes. And just mix the whole thing? Yeah, third, third, three thirds. Right. Uh, once you've had that's incorporated, guys, can you add some cream? Yeah. Just some whipping cream. And once the cream's in, I'm going to add kish. Do you guys know what kish? You tasted or smelled kish before? Jamie is the barman, so I'm sure he knows what kish is. But for the rest of you, kish is a cherry brandy. Cream all at once? Cream all at once, yep. For me, the smell of the Black Forest is kish. Absolutely kish. Amelia, once you smell that, can you come over and just chuck that in that bamry, please? And then finally, a bit of truffle oil. OK. So we just put a... And then pop that into a siphon. And we'll keep that warm. That's going to be a warm white chocolate kirsch and white truffle mousse to sit on top of the, the hot chocolate. OK, Heston, I'll change the siphon while you get on with the cloud element. In here, I have a mix of water that I've dissolved cocoa nibs and left that, just left it for a few hours, dissolved that and then added to that some more kirsch and some chocolate liqueur. So this is going to form a cloud. It'll be a cloud of kirsch, believe it or not, that sits on top of the, of the chocolate, the white chocolate mousse. So making the cloud with one of these, it's a very special piece of kit called a cloud pourer. It's a beaker, the lid, there's a little basket underneath. So I'm popping into this little basket pieces of dry ice. Uh, dry ice in there. Pop that onto the lid. And then into this beaker, pour the water, kish, nib, cocoa, and chocolate liqueur mix. So what should happen when you do this? Oh my God. There you've got that. Oops. Oh, 
See what you mean. Oh my god. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> what that is, it's just like boom. You know, there's chocolate, there's cherry, there's you know, that's that was fantastic. We'll pour the chocolate into the Okay, you're just putting it all together now. Okay, so now. It's like making an Irish coffee, Heston. I know. I'm <laughs> concentrating very hard. Then squeeze the foam in. That's it. Then, on top of that, I'll just take a little bit of chocolate shavings. OK, so we've got the chocolate ganache infused with the quiche and the zest and the coffee, all served with a quiche cloud. And we'll serve that with a shortbread biscuit on the side. OK, so what I'll do, I'll come around this side. Do you, do you want to take this? I'll oh, sure, pour and then go back and sit down. <laughs> so hold the glass, that's it, and then we'll pour the cloud on. And then just sip through it. I'm going to sip this. So now sip. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> Should I pass it on? No. <laughs> I'll, uh... Yum. Always pour that way, yes, not yep. that way, because you've got the liquid in, that's it. Sure, go. What a spectacular way to finish off Masterclass. And I think while you're finishing that off, boys, and going crazy, I think we should give a big round of applause for Heston for <laughs> coming in. <laughs> and here's to the finale, the finals week of MasterChef 2014. And here's to Heston Blumenthal. Brilliant stuff. Best of luck.